and five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment, entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. The men in this frontline position said ISIS fighters were only 500 yards away. This is where the war is being fought on hot, empty roads in the heart of Iraq. And what's going on here has repercussions not just across this country, but right across the Middle East. It's changing the political dynamic. It's deepening sectarian divides. And eventually, it may well be felt a long way from here, in Europe or in the United States. All right, folks, uh, we are joined right now, as promised, by Michael Rubin, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, senior lecturer at the Naval Postgraduate School. Hey, Michael. Hey, Steve. Great to talk to you again, and uh, welcome back from, uh, from Jordan. And uh, I want to talk to you all about that, but I do first want to get your reaction to uh, what we're seeing. Uh, it looks like uh, a full-fledged, all-out war breaking out between Israel and Hamas. Uh, the rockets raining down, the sirens going off, the uh, uh, Israel uh, Iron Dome uh, intercepting rockets over Tel Aviv, um, and uh, Israel uh, calling up uh, some 40,000 troops. Uh, where are we headed here, do you believe? Well, you know, we're not heading anywhere good. What's ironic is just a week ago, the State Department was intent on having Hamas as part of a joint government with the Palestinian Authority uh, with President Abbas. Now it looks like the Israelis have no choice but to move into the Gaza Strip to try to eradicate the terror infrastructure. The only thing really working in the Israelis' favor right now, however, is that there's no longer a regime in Egypt which is supportive of Hamas. The irony again, of course, though, is that President Obama has been less than supportive of the new CC government in Egypt. Right, and yet at the same time, he's been supportive, most supportive, of the new unity government of the Palestinians, which includes Hamas, put the legality of that aside, because this administration announced almost from the get-go that they would continue to financially support the Palestinian Authority, uh, as well as support them in other ways. Um, how on earth does this administration continue that support uh, in the face of the rocket attacks into Israel by Hamas? not to mention the op-ed written by the president today in the Israeli newspaper uh, praising Mahmoud Abbas and not saying a word about Benjamin Netanyahu. It's almost as if this is some kind of a, you know, story from the onion or, or, or crazy made-up uh, fantasy, but it's real. Well, you know, Steve, up is down and uh, right is left in this administration when it comes to uh, Israel and when it comes to basic security. What Hamas is doing shouldn't surprise anyone. They've embraced the Islamic Republic of Iran. Part of their cha um, charter calls for the death, not of Israelis, but of Jews. Well, the problem with our State Department is too often that we will whitewash opponents in order to try to make them smell like roses. Ultimately, however, reality always sets in. And when reality comes crashing down, what we have are missiles over Tel Aviv, missiles over Jerusalem, and make no mistake, we can thank the American taxpayer in part for this because the Obama administration decided to continue to fund the, the coalition government that um, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas went into with Hamas. Money is fungible, so all, that tax do all those tax dollars meant that Hamas had more money to spend on such weaponry. And, and, and again, one more time on the president's uh, piece today in the Israeli newspaper, uh, calling Abbas a man of peace who is willing to work uh, and accept a two-state solution when he's never accepted uh, Israel as a Jewish state. And his two-state solution is two Palestinian states. But all that aside, I mean, I don't know if it's ignorance, if it's chutzpah, if it's, if it's uh, uh, the utter lack of caring, uh, if it's arrogance. But how do you write that? When, when war is, is about to break out, and he knows war was about to break out. The problem we see right now is a consistent American approach, and this has been very much the case with the Obama administration, in which he will um, reward defiance and give incentives for bluster. The more the Palestinian Authority pulled away from real peace, from accepting Israel as a Jewish state, the more aid they've received from the United States, the more concessions they've received 
from the U.S. State Department. Some American diplomats have even sat down with Hamas when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. And ultimately, we see that they, they pocket these concessions, they take advantage of them, but they don't change their fundamental approach. If we're not going to support our allies, who are we going to support? And make no mistake, this is a lesson that not only Israelis are learning, but also the South Koreans, the Taiwanese, and so forth. It doesn't pay to be allied with the United States. Can, can, can Israel eradicate the Hamas threat? Are they willing to eradicate the Hamas threat? They weren't willing to go all out and, 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 and just annihilate Hezbollah when they had a chance to, uh, because I've already heard the count. You know, how many children have already been killed by Israeli airstrikes? Well, you know what? If Mexico or, uh, or Canada was bombing the United States and we retaliated to try to stop that bombing, would the American media be counting the number of children who were hit inadvertently in Mexico or Canada as we tried to protect our own citizens in Texas or wherever? But that's what Israel's up against. That's what Israel's always been up against. Do they have it within them to actually get the job done? Or will this just be another temporary victory? Hamas claims victory, and they reload to fight another day. Well, that's one of the questions that the State Department needs to answer. One of the most corrosive notions in international diplomacy is this idea that all reactions have to be proportionate. If Hamas fires rockets at Israel, there's, that's, that's a declaration of war, and the best way for war to end is for one side to be roundly defeated, the wrong side to be roundly defeated, the evil side to be roundly defeated. And if that's the case, Hamas has decided they want to pick this fight. They shouldn't, Israel shouldn't allow themselves to be hung out and to dry because of international diplomacy. They should do what's necessary to Hamas. Hamas wants to fight to the death. Well, let the Israelis deliver them to that. And, of course, uh, we all know where Hamas is going to plant the, rec the uh, rocket launchers uh, in mosques, in hospitals, on rooftops, in schoolyards, so that when Israel strikes, oh, Israel killed these children, Israel bombed a hospital, uh, and then they get the PR victory they want. Let's move on uh, your trip to Jordan. And you talked with the Iraqi opposition to ISIS. Uh, tell us what you learned uh, on, on that uh, very valuable trip, uh, Michael. Well, basically, I was talking to many of the Sunnis, including former members of Saddam Hussein's regime, who are disaffected with Prime Minister Maliki. But at the same time, they say that while they're perfectly happy for ISIS to rise up against Maliki, ISIS shouldn't be under any illusions that they're going to be allowed to remain. Basically, what these Sunni tribal elements are saying is, hey, ISIS can rise up and do the dying, but as soon as they move on, we're going to take over their ground and reimpose our own Iraqi solution. So, in a sense, what we're seeing is a replay of what happened with the surge. The question is whether Caliph Ibrahim, as um, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi calls himself now, is recognizes that this is going to happen. Already there's been reports today that ISIS forces have been going back to Mosul, rounding up senior tribal officials, senior members of uh, the Ba'ath Party to prevent them from rising up against ISIS. What kind of threat is ISIS to uh, that Jordanian border? Well, it's not the border I'm worried about, Steve. It's the Kingdom of Jordan. Because make no mistake, King Abdullah II may be popular in Washington, he may be popular in New York, he may be popular in Europe, but the one place that matters most, he's not popular, and that's inside the Kingdom of Jordan. Now, there's a huge number of refugees in Jordan, the economy is in the tank, and ultimately there's a real threat that ISIS could unseat, could overthrow the monarchy in Jordan. And you know, if Jordan goes, then we're looking at, at a whole new Middle East, something fundamentally different that we haven't seen since before World War II. Let me take it back, uh, one final question, Michael, to this administration. How culpable do you believe um, the Obama administration has been it, when all is said and done, no matter what happens with ISIS here, because I don't see this administration taking any action. So if they are stalled, or if, God forbid, they succeed in that nightmare scenario you just presented, uh, when you couple that with Libya, when you couple that with uh, Egypt, when you couple that with, uh, with Syria, um, how culpable is, uh, is, is uh, this administration in letting all this happen? You know, they're culpable on two fronts, Steve. Number one, they haven't understood that terrorism is caused by ideology, 
not by grievance. It's not a man-made disaster. It's not something you can throw incentives at. Number two, they don't understand that the importance of the U.S. military isn't to be an arrow in our quiver. It's not meant simply to be a policy option. Rather, American military power is the finger in the dike preventing the deluge of chaos. And President Obama has simply taken the military out and allowed chaos to reign. He may have thought that altruism would fill that vacuum, but the world doesn't operate on the whims and the values of a neighborhood organizer. It operates on reality, and that reality in the Middle East isn't something pleasant. All right, Michael, very educational. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll speak to you soon, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, Michael Rubin, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, what could you say? Um, we now have, again, uh, what, what is uh, and has to be considered a full-fledged war uh, between Israel and Hamas. And, uh, you know, Hamas never really stops launching the rockets into Israel from the Gaza Strip. Uh, they take breaks or they shoot one here, one there. Uh, they keep coming, but now they're raining down. I believe there are reports of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 40 um, in, uh, in the last hour. Um, the biggest one ever salvo of long-range ro uh, rockets, uh, rockets ever. These are long-range rockets. They're, they're reaching Tel Aviv. Uh, the sirens are going off in Jerusalem. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a war. This is a war. And uh, I, I just wonder what the United States government is going to say. And I wonder how far the Israeli government will be willing to go. When we come back, political scientist Dr. Charles Murray will be here. Progressive or liberal?